Ah, oh, you got your oh, books no. on the internet. <laughs> your internet is on my books. Oh, thanks. What are you doing with all those anyway? Research projects. What are you doing with that? I'm looking them up online like a smart person. Just really on the internet? How, how do you find um, stuff? Google, Wikipedia, it's so easy. All you gotta do is just type in what you're looking for. Well, my teacher wants me to use books so I can just go back and look at it right there. Are you two arguing again? What is it this time? Which was better than books or online stuff? Well, either of you could be right. Let's go ask Deborah. She probably needs something to do. Ugh. Oh, hi, you guys. What can I do for you? These two are arguing again. We, um, do you know, are books or internet better? Oh, books or internet? Well, they're both great. I use them both all the time. It's kind of hard to choose. Like, if you're in a hurry and you've got a good internet connection, the internet can be really handy. It's right there. A lot of the information is updated really regularly. Um, it's quick. So, the internet can be really good. Yeah, and games and videos and movies and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, right. There's tons of stuff on the internet. And websites can also give you access to things that you probably couldn't get in person. Like, um, okay, like actual historical documents that you wouldn't be able to, like, we couldn't get our hands on the Declaration of Independence. That's a pretty precious document. But in the National Archives, you can look at the back of the Declaration of Independence. Cool. Yeah, so let me show you that. That's oh awesome. Oh my gosh. I know, right? Isn't wow. that cool? All right, so. Gosh. So the internet is better. I'm going back to my game because I need to look up everything later. Okay, okay, but the internet's not the only good thing. Books are actually really good too. Books are organized. Sometimes it can be really hard to find what you want on the internet, and a book can have a really good index, much easier to use. And there are some things that you can't find on a website. So, for example, this book right the here. Water. Oh, the Water Encyclopedia. Water. Oh. It's full of information that the authors could not find online. So that's a lot of information that was not online, and it's a lot of details. You can sometimes wander into things you didn't even expect when you're flipping through a book. And a good book is authoritative. I know what that means. It means if you know who wrote the book and if what they're actually talking about. Yeah, if they know what they're talking about. Like, if you can really rely on them as a source. That is something it's easier to find sometimes in a book. I guess that's one of the reasons Teachers and libraries like it so much. That exactly. Much. Yeah, exactly. And of course, you don't have to worry that a book is going to stop working. The electricity will go out, the book will disappear while you're using it. And books are also, they're full of so many details that they're really good for learning something besides just the central subject. Unless there's a new edition, the book basically stays the same. So it's kind of a good record of the time that it came from and, where, and the time that the author lived in. So, like Tom Sawyer. Yeah. Or Anna Green Gables. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And actually, books can be like a physical book, can be a really cool connection to long ago times. I have this book right here that I was just looking at. It is a history of the country of Burma, but the book itself, this physical object, is 125 years old. And this is very cool. Inside, there's a handwritten dedication that was written in 1942, and it says, to my dear and loyal friend. And so it's like a whole extra story that's inside this physical book. That's really cool. Yeah, so you can actually leave things in books and change books in a way that you wouldn't change the internet. The internet was not around then. <laughs> True, the internet was not around then. So you're not going to say, the books or the internet is better, or are you? I, I'm not. They're both good at some things and not as good at other things, and they, they kind of just mix together. There are things online that talk about things in the real world, like librarians love to make lists of really great books, really great resources. We put our lists online. We also have them in paper. Um, but when you look online, sometimes it says, go find these really great books. You can get e-books off, off of the web from the library. You can check out e-books. Can I can I get Allegiant? 
I, I'm in position 300 on the holds list and do not want to wait for those to come back. That's exactly it. Sometimes you can get an ebook long before you can get the physical book. If the physical book's checked out, Allegiant's pretty popular, so we may have to put you in line for that, but we will try. And we have online databases that are actually full of journals and newspapers like a journal from London or a newspaper from Germany that we're not going to get here at the library physically, but you can get your hands on these copies of physical newspapers online. So it's basically all really mixed together. Okay, they are both pretty good. I guess these two will have to find something else to argue about. Thanks, Deborah. You're welcome. Well, wait. Then is an ebook a book or part of the internet? They're on the internet, so... But they're books, Josiah. Ebooks, duh. Oh, that's they're on the internet. That didn't take long. If it's better to use books or the internet to do our projects paper, I think you better stuff stuff your books. I <laughs> <laughs> keep together. Dry grease is peanut butter. <laughs> you can actually see the back side of the Declaration of Independence. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, that's so Say that, that that one is better than the the other. Are you? 